What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to FS4T, the podcast. My name is Chris, and I'm so glad you're here, because this is going to be a great episode. We have had directors, composers, actors, and hosts, and today, you know what? I'm just going to play something for you. The production designer's job is to design and build everything you see on the screen. They can make you believe you're at a racetrack, in a hobbit house, at an artist studio, on a British warship, or even in a samurai village in Japan. The nominees for achievement in art direction are... Grant Major for the art direction and Dan Henna and Alan Lee for the set decoration of The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. And the Oscar goes to... Grant Major for Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, for set decoration, Dan Henna and Alan Lee. This is the first Academy Award for Grant Major, Dan Henna and Alan Lee, who were previously nominated last year for the Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. So that's our guest today. We have an Oscar-winning production designer on the show, Grant Major, who won for Lord of the Rings. Not only is that just a huge, uh, just insane accomplishment, but just being in this field and doing the type of movies that he has done. He's also been nominated for uh, Power of the Dog recently. And um, this is just, it's an incredible conversation. He talks about the role of production designer, what art decorators do um, it, it's really interesting so listen in take some notes and enjoy the episode this is a first for us we've had oscar nominated people on the the show here before but grant major you are our first academy award winner for lord of the rings return of the king it is an absolute pleasure to have you on thank you so much and I am so incredibly excited for this conversation. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, bring it on. A, a massive amount of our students are uh, Lord of the Rings fanatics. And so, you know, I think being able to sit down and talk to the person who is very much responsible for creating the standard for Middle Earth, the look of it, for the Hobbit, the new Lord of the Rings with Amazon, you know, is kind of adhering to what you set forth, even Game of Thrones. There's so much visually that I think was probably centrally taken from your your te- you and your team's core ideas with Lord of the Rings as art director, production designer, and this is going to be incredible. I'm, I'm really excited. Excellent. Thanks for the opportunity. That's Thank you. Done. So as a production designer or art director, which, which term is it that you kind of give yourself? Well, look, I, uh, I'll just um, reframe it slightly. I'm talking to you from New Zealand, my mm-hmm. hometown here. And um, in New Zealand, we, um, we have a sort of commercial area of filmmaking and the filmmaking. Generally, you know, uh, so commercials and then then um, movies. So in commercials, I would call myself a art director, and um, you know, I'm not quite sure why. It's just like in that industry, you know, art direct, you know, these sort of shorter TV commercials and things like that, which I end up doing. But when I do a film, I'm a production designer, and I think that um, it's just the Hollywood tradition, really, of mm-hmm. um, production design. Even in the the Oscar. The Oscars recently used to be, I won my Oscar for art direction in um, 2001, I think, whatever it was. And um, But I think now they've sort of changed that um, title to production designer. You know, you, you win an Oscar for production designer now. If I was at the same, doing the same competition now. Gotcha. So, yeah. Production designer, mainly. I must say, my own job, uh, it's about 95% production design. Okay. And congratulations, by the way, for Power of the Dog, a yeah. an absolute beautifully shot movie. Um, it was just such a gorgeous film to look at. Um, well done with that. That was uh, beautiful on the eyes. 
so so tell me grant when when you sit down when you're when you accept a you know um the role of production designer for a movie say for power of the dog since that's you know the the current most recent um what is what's the process for a production diner, designer what do you actually do when you're presented with a script and when you decide to come on board it was a fairly there's a fairly established process and um I'm not quite sure how I how I learnt it. Probably just through um, osmosis, you know, working in the industry for so long. Um, but you know, I get delivered a script first. You know, the, the very first after I someone asks, you know, the producers ask if I'm interested in in um, the project. I look at a script, read the script, um, and I just try and read it as a uh, an audience member might experience it. So as the story, basically, and then I try and read it again. And I uh, break down in my own mind. Um, okay, how am I gonna? How would I go about doing this? What is it? You know, which areas feel like locations, and which areas feel like sets? You know, like to build, and what are the um, the sort of uh, challenges that I'm going to be faced with where I to take this project on? Um, because what I'm doing, I'm just gathering. Um, ammunition really for a interview that I'm going to have with the director and that tends to happen after I've read the script uh, sometimes the producer gets on the phone with the director or zoom these days um, and they and we'd all talk about the project and I'm expected to know something about it you know through my experience of reading the script on some occasions if the script is based on a book I would read the book as well if I have time to do that so I'm just trying to get in as much information as I possibly can um, to 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 um, really have a um, constructive um, conversation with them. Um, they usually, uh, as often as not, they talk to several uh, production design possibilities, you know. And um, so I'm, I'm competing with other people, you could say, mm. to get the job and the bigger jobs anyway. And then, um, you know, really k- kicking it off after that, we um, uh, I tend to start a research process. So, um, you know, once I've got the job, I sort of get my head into the time and the place that the, that the script is describing. Um, it's not always here on earth. <laughs> it's sometimes in the future, it's sometimes in the past, sometimes on different, different countries and all that sort of stuff. It's a huge kind of um, thing to take on the research of a different time and place. And um, that tends to be um, kind of the most dominant early phase of my um, job. I'm also um, trying to sort out the business side of things. Okay, what is, how much money are we gonna have to spend making this project? Um, Where is it gonna be made? You know, is it in my hometown or am I gonna travel overseas or am I gonna travel down country somewhere? Or, you know, where is it gonna be be happening? And that sort of has an effect on who I employ. So I'm looking in the first instance for a supervising art director that somebody who's going to take care of the the practicalities of actually making what has to be made, um, of employing um, the 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 key crew members after that, like who's going to be the set decorator, who's going to be the props master, who's going to be the construction manager. Those are the the, the main people that I need to find, and these are catered towards the type of film that I'm doing. So, if it's a great big film, you know, I'm after the very best person I can find. Um, who has experience in doing, you know, they may have a track record in doing the sort of film that I'm looking for. You know, more boutique films, I just maybe I'm after somebody who's going to be sort of compatible in other sorts of ways. Um, so it's kind yeah, of a, um, your, your entire department is a director kind of producer relationship too. Then it seems you're kind of directing the whole department, you're supervising art directors, mm. kind of producing everything for you and, uh, I mean, it seems very similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a hierarchy within a hierarchy. You could yeah. say. but but in you know in New Zealand, we have we have hierarchies, but it's um, it's pretty friendly. You know, we all know each other, and um, uh, so I know the skills that people have, and I know the skills that I'm looking for um, that that I should be able to find. So, is that? No, then we set it, then we find out where we're going to make it. You know, if we're going to make it, we need to find offices to do, be able to design, hiring set designers, hiring graphic artists and coordinators and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it just, um, there's that crewing up. And um, then we just, you know, start 
um, at the most, probably the most important parts of the film. You know, from my point of view, I, um, I, I employ concept artists, or sometimes I do it myself, but largely I employ them these days to look at particular production moments from the film. Okay, what's in the power of the dog? What is the Burbank Ranch going to look like? And um, then I'm sort of pitching these ideas, you know, the, the, these key things which are done by illustrations or 3D models. Mm -hmm. I'm creating often variations on a theme that I can discuss with the director and sort of get a two-way conversation going about what he or she is looking for and, um, you know, what I can deliver for the right amount of time and all that sort of thing. So um, it just tends to be, you know, start with the big job, the big chunky jobs. <laughs> and then um, I do love to get a room that I can put all the research material up and then all these concept art um, images up sketches, ideas, um, just uh, all sorts of things that help construct the story from a visual, in a visual language and an architectural language. So when it comes to simply because our, you know, our, our audience here is, you know, students, high school students that may or may not be um, given permission by parents to view R-rated movies, you know, entirely. So to shift with something a little more known to them, Lord of the Rings, right? What was, what is it like? And, and obviously you have a history with Peter Jackson, you know, doing the Frighteners and then three films for Lord of the Rings, King Kong. Um, do you, when you started Lord of the Rings, were you a fan of that, um, that book series by Tolkien to begin with? Yeah, I was. I um, I wasn't a um, sort of total, uh, you know, <laughs> focused fan. I had read the book in the 1970s, actually, when it okay. um, too long after it was published. Um, it was it was very well read in amongst um, you know my I was in my early 20s or late teens, I think, when I read it, and um, you know it had a lot of impact at the time on music and. Um, Liter you know, literature generally, you know, it, it did have quite a sort of social impact on things. So I was aware of it, but I never dreamt in my, in my wildest dreams that I'd ever get the opportunity to work on it. Um, so, yeah, I was a fan. So was that kind of for, for you to be able to take this vast world, you know, that Tolkien, you know, wrote, was that kind of for you, from your perspective, just a kid in a candy store of, Wow, I get to use my imagination, hire great teams, because those are huge budget movies. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you had just a massive team of people surrounding you. What was what was that experience like for the first film? Yeah, look, you have to um, put yourself in my shoes. And I've been, uh, I still am, a New Zealand designer. It's sort of in the, it's not close to anywhere, really. And we have our own little small boutique industry going on. And I've been working with Peter, like you say, on Heavenly Creatures and then in the frighteners, and um, so we had a sort of working relationship. But starting on something on the scale of Lord of the Rings was um, really kind of within our own expectations. You know, we were just in our with our small industry. We were we were taking on something a big, very big project, and it was just um, mind blowing, really, to think about how much we had to achieve to be able to make it actually happen. It's being such a well-read book, such a beautifully read book, uh, a beautifully written book, um, with so much detail and and so much expectations um, from a uh, an audience of people out there. We had to be very, very careful the way we um, brought the world of Middle Earth to life. I did my very best to go through page by page and line by line, picking out all the details that um, the descriptive details that. J.R.R. Tolkien had written oh. uh, and to make sure that all those were manifested in the location, location we find in the sets that we designed and all the elements that, that the sets made up um, so that they read the same way as you would read it in the book. So we we're very, being very, very thorough, um, particularly to Hobbiton and, and the like. Um, there's a certain amount of description, or should I say the, the words went so far towards describing the dwarf um, kingdom and the uh, the elf um, culture and things like that. So we did do a lot of invention for those um, groups of people. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, it's really just like I was just saying just before, we just have to start with the big things. Like, okay, what do the Middle Earth look like? What, is, what does Rivendell look like? What does um, the Mines of Moria look like? And what does a Balrog look like? And um, so start with these things, start all these building blocks and then fill in all the gaps in between with all the other sort of scenes. And it's just day by day, hour by hour, making as better, as best um, creative choices as we possibly can um, and then just finding all those away, getting them made ultimately um, and building up a whole sort of, um, you know, the whole sort of visual language of the film sort of emerges from all those sort of individual jobs. So you've, you've given great detail of what it's, you know, the pre-production phase uh, of production design and everything you do. What is it like on set? Are you actually on set with the director and producers? Um, you know, describe that for me, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, look, uh, the short answer to it in some ways is no, I no, don't usually, I personally don't usually hang around on set. In some ways, my job is done by the time that they start rolling the cameras and I'm working on the next thing, you know, so I'm always working a day in advance or a, a week in advance or sometimes a month in advance. Mm -hmm. I'm always keeping ahead of the shooting day. Um, but I do have my standby crew that are on that are with the director. Um, that'll be the um, standby art director we have here. Um, we just uh, wrangle things on a moment to moment basis. Uh, we have standby props people and um, all those people that work for with them, standby carpenter, standby painter. Um, so I have a little crew crew of people that that um, that are part of the main shooting crew. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but you know, largely I'm I'm working ahead on, um, of things. And so, when the picture wraps, principal photography is done. Are you moving on to the next project completely, or is there more for you to, and your team to do after that? Yeah, that's an interesting, very interesting question actually, because things are changing a wee bit. Um, you know, as films become more elaborate, um, some of my duties carry on to post production. Traditionally, I would wrap uh, photography on a film um, and then I'm finished. I'm, I'm um, looking for work after that. Um, but on occasions, um, like in particular on Lord of the Rings, there was a lot of publicity that had to happen. And um, because of the timing, because of the timing uh, of the three films, um, we were swinging right into um, uh, exhibition work, I suppose, of re-erecting some of the sets and some of the uh, creatures and things like that in various places around the world. Um, so there was that sort of uh, process. There's also a lot of interviews for the making of and for other publicity things. Um, but uh, there is, these days, there's a little bit more to do with the post-production process with the visual effects. So even though the film is being edited, I a lot of the production design work I've done is virtual and not real. So, you know, I've done my real sets and things like that. And then the virtual work um, happens in the, in the um, computer graphics side of things. Um, I do deliver to them a sort of a package of what the visual effect is going to be. Okay, this is what that shot's going to look like. This is what's going to be all the elements in the shot. Um, and so sometimes those need a little bit of massaging as they, as they go through the post-production process. Uh, but it varies from project to project. I mean, I, you could say by and large, my work is done after the principal photography, um, but with some exceptions. So um, when it comes to production design and visual effects, you know, when you see um, King Kong, for example, where, you know, or Lord of the Rings, any movie that's, you know, has these big, it seems like it's a big scale, you know, set, but realistically there's just a lot of green or blue screen panels, you know, for the digital artist to come in. Uh, what, what kind of percentage is that decision for that? between you and the the visual effects artist like who who kind of works in tandem decides that uh as the way to go or is it just strictly budget it's budget definitely has a has a bearing on it but it's also just the doability of being able to do something that's yeah. You know, there's, there's got to be a limit to what i can control sure i can control the location uh as it's found and i can add a few things to a location um i can build a set that's only so big but past a point, it becomes um, 
uneconomic and un impractical to do everything in camera or like for the camera. So um, we tend to define a, a line that I can, that I work up to and then beyond that becomes a visual effect. But the production design um, is a design process. So I'm designing, not only am I designing where we film and uh, what we film in a practical sense, but I'm also designing what that extension is going to be um, by and large. So um, I do do that through production art, through um, concept, concept work as much as possible. Um, this is how I work but other designers and other visual effects producers have their own variations on that. But I do try and be turnkey with the um, design. I do try and do everything that in that movie that's gonna be on the screen that I'm involved with in terms of the design has been conceptualized at the very least. And um, if not made, the package handed over to the visual effects producer. So we're, we're nearing the end of our time here. You've you've worked on X Men, Lord of the Rings, Walking with Dinosaurs, Green Lantern, um, Power of the Dogs, so Westerns, uh, Frighteners, Horror. What genre of movie would you like to work on that maybe you haven't? Uh, that or I have, have you have you have you kind of encompassed everything? Uh, look, I haven't done um, so much uh, sci-fi yet. I've been, I was pigeonholed, after Lord of the Rings, I was pigeonholed in a fantasy kind of thing. So, um, and I'm just getting out of that a little bit now, doing a few more period period films. Um, but I did enjoy a film called The Meg. I don't know if that's on your list of things there, but The Meg was oh, a, I, uh, I, I really liked that because it was the, the movie was set about 10 years in the future. Um, and so I was able to, you know, when you do sort of slightly futuristic things, sort of um, design or sort of contemporary design has a lot more to do with the production design of things. So, you know, like it's almost like vehicle designs or airplane designs that are like at the cutting edge of, of, the, of, the, um, of those sort of technologies now have a bearing on what things are going to look like in the future. So, um, you know, a, a wish list would be to do a, uh, a futuristic thing, which... Um, you know, maybe forward in 50 years or 100 years or something like that. Maybe they have flying cars by then. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we can uh, we can get in touch with Lucasfilm and get you to do a Star Wars movie or something. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be <laughs> great, yeah. All right. So uh, last question here. We ask everybody, what is your favorite movie? That I would tell all that my favorite, favorite movie. Well, I, I asked that after. We always kind of do yeah. two. Favorite movie you've worked on, and then your just favorite movie just as an audience member. Yeah. Well, look, I, um, I'm, I'm old now. I'm a, I'm a 66-year-old guy, and I still go back to a seminal experience that I had in the 1970s, watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm. I think that's one of the – that's got to be the most impactful film that I've ever seen. I think, and particularly because of the the story was um, very um, realistic for what space yeah. is, and it still is, you know. And it's and it's and it's also a horror story, and it's also a action story, and it's also a sort of a, a philosophical kind of um, personal journey, and all sorts of things. So yeah, it's brilliant. I, think. I just watched that like two weeks ago. Really, I, I like. There's a few movies I revisit every year, no matter what, just to, just because they're just too good not to. Yeah. And that's that's one of them for me. Yeah. All right. And so, the, your favorite movie you've worked on? Sure. Well, look, I can't remember back to all the movies because I every time I do a movie, I said it's a new thing which I have to expel everything else out of my mind. But probably. Um, Gosh, it's hard. Um, actually, it's a hard question. I think probably King Kong is, would be my favourite really? film. You know? okay. I mean, there's always a the making of to me. There's a the making of, which is my involvement, and then there's the final product. And I think that they were both good experiences for me, but in particular, the final products of King Kong, I, I love that. Yeah. Great. It's terrific. Yeah, my, um, my youngest is six years old, and he loves dinosaurs, and so I'm holding off showing him Jurassic Park and – some of those just for the intensity of it and him still getting nightmares and stuff. 
but I showed him, I couldn't wait any longer because I love the entire scene between King Kong and the, the T-Rexes. Cause yeah. I think it's just absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. And, and he just, his jaw was on the floor the whole time. And it's just, that's such a great moment. Yeah. But um, Grant, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing your experience. You are just a, a, a powerhouse in the, in the film industry, Oscar winner, all the movies you've done. This has been so great and so wonderful. And thank you for providing such insight into production design. Um, and if there's one, one last question here, I'm sorry. If there's anything our students can do to help with their attention to detail to production or sets, is there any tips you can give these our young filmmakers when it comes to um, a lot of them are, you know, single man crews or just two or three people what can they do to up their production value for their their sets and their locations with pretty much no budget most of yeah. the time yeah oh my god this uh yeah, interesting i guess it's just to be critical be critical of everything don't take it don't take anything as for granted and um you know be your own be your own voice would be what i would say you know be original and um, don't be afraid. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Okay, my pleasure. So thank you again to Grant Major, Oscar winner of Lord of the Rings Return of the King. I hope this has been an incredible insight into production design, uh, set decoration, and how those departments work within you know making a movie. This is something that we hold dear is bringing you guys insight into every aspect of filmmaking, not just directing or editing or acting, but these little nuances that we don't always think about, but are incredibly important. The Grant, I mean, created this standard for Lord of the Rings, something that everybody kind of adheres to now if they want to make any sort of fantasy element world. Uh, whether it's a movie or a video game like Elden Ring, look at that in comparison to his work on Lord of the Rings. So we want to be able to showcase what these people do to give you guys insight and maybe help you navigate your journey into filmmaking. But anyway, this was a lot of fun. Thank you to Grant. Thank you to you guys for being here and for listening. Next week, let's see. I'm going to turn here and we have we have a great YouTuber next week. So all you YouTube for teen students, and even if you're not, this is still incredibly insightful. Some great nuggets that our next guest shares on next week's episode. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week.